Good evening. So good to see you here. I know that we sometimes have a habit of tuning out the announcements that we've heard for the last three to four weeks. So therefore, now that I've got your attention and maybe mildly offended you, let me just go ahead and remind you of some of what you've already heard, which has been printed in our Sunday worship guides, as well as you've been hearing Sister Jennifer tell us about them. First and foremost, tomorrow morning at 1030, ladies, if you can make it, there is a ladies' prayer meeting that will be hosted in the Education Center. That's tomorrow morning at 1030, ladies' prayer meeting. As well, I want you to know that if you need to take advantage of the flu clinic shots, please sign up for those tonight. That is taking place this Sunday, and uh, it's a good opportunity. That way you don't have to go out to another place, to a different place, because most of you are planning on being here Sunday anyway, right? All right. Amen. Praise God. That was the right answer, too. You, you <laughs> did that almost on cue. So proud of you. Let me remind you as well that um, weekly on Wednesdays, we publish and we have the prayer list updated. So those are back there on the little table. Please be sure to pick one of those up so that you can help us pray through the plethora of needs that exist here. Uh, so, Because if we went through trying to call each one of these needs, we'd be here for the next hour and a half and not even have gotten to the rest of the worship service. But we trust that you have a prayer life on your own and at home. Well, tonight I know that you've come here to worship the Lord. And I want us to get started with a call to worship from Psalm 69. Psalm 69. And I want to share with you verses 30, 31, and 32 before we stand and look to the Lord in prayer. I tell you what, why don't we just go ahead and stand right now? I think some of you just need to get the blood circulating and pumping again, right? Psalm 69, verses 30 through 32. I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving. This also shall please the Lord better than an ox or bull which has horns and hooves. The humble shall see this and be glad, and you who seek God, your hearts shall live. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we declare that we have come this way to worship you, Lord, in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the gift of song, for the gift of music, Lord, and we're about to use that, Lord, to do our best to utilize and just make a joyful noise, Lord, of the gifts you've given us, that we might be able to praise you and worship you just a little bit better. Father, as it comes time tonight to hear the word, the spoken ministry, we thank you for the anointing upon our speaker tonight, Lord, for the anointing upon our hearts to hear, to receive from the Holy Spirit. And now as we've come this way, we thank you, Lord, that you're here, that all things are possible of those who spend time in your presence, Lord, those who spend time feasting on your presence, Lord, I thank you for divine revelation, Lord, I thank you for deliverance taking place in the lives of your people, Lord, as mentally and spiritually chains begin to fall off. To our Father, tonight, we trust you and we thank you, Lord, that miracles still happen when your people come together and worship, for it's in Jesus' name we believe, and everyone said, Amen. praise God. Amen. You may have your seats in the presence of God. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. How many is glad to be here tonight? Amen. Anybody is glad to be here? Let's see some smiling faces like you're glad to be here. Amen. I count it an honor and a privilege to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. It gives me great joy to walk in here. And I, I, I don't know, I feel so good tonight. I was, uh, and we, let's get ready to receive our time and office since you're smiling already. But uh, I was talking to someone on our way to church tonight, and uh, they had applied for a job for about, about six or seven weeks ago, and I was encouraging them to call. And I said, just call. And uh, they said, no, they're supposed to email me uh, when they get all my background check. And I said, just call. I said, because I believe I have the favor of God, and I believe that if I call, when I, and I talk to that person. I tell them my name is John Whitaker. They'll look through the stack of 50 or 100 and find my application. And all of a sudden, my application is on top right now. And then I use, let, let God use me to talk with them and, and turn their heart toward God and turn their heart toward me. And, and if they're looking for to fill a position on Monday, I believe I'll get that position. But before I call, I believe I might have been down at 50 or 100. And they say, you know, I never thought of it like that. And I said, I want you to let you know that favor ain't fast. 
The fair thing to do is just wait till you get to the hundred person they need to hire, and that's your turn. But I believe God has given us supernatural favor because we would give him the glory for it. Anybody else, they would give the glory to the education, all the, the certifications they have, all the people that recommended them. But I know my help comes from the Lord, and I know promotion don't come from the east or the west. It comes from above. And when I got finished, I got finished telling them that I got excited all myself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Man, but I want to encourage you that you have the favor of God. You have supernatural favor. Amen. And God will turn that person's heart towards you. Amen. Offering scripture tonight, it says, Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply you, multiply seed you have sown. I like that. Multiply seed you have sown. So you got to sow it. Amen. And increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are, are enriched in everything for all liberality, which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Amen. It says that he's the one that give us the seed and he's the one that uh, supplies our basic need. And he give us a seed to sow after he supplies our need. And if we sow that seed, amen, he will multiply it. And as we continue, as he multiplies, he gives us more to give to be a blessing to others. And it increases in, in our righteousness toward him and our thanksgiving toward him. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we just, we just thank you for so many ways that you have been good to us. So many ways that you have provided for us and looked after us and directed us. And Lord, you just a good father and you're perfect in all your ways toward us and Lord as we give tonight we give with gladness we give knowing that you're faithful to take care of us and Lord we pray that what is given is more than enough to meet the needs of your ministry here for your ministry is important to us your ministry is a top priority to us. What's important to you is important to us. We count for the privilege to give tonight. And Lord, as we place it in your hand, Lord, we ask you to bless it and multiply it and make it more than enough to meet the needs here at Harvest and meet the needs of your people that will come and need help. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And let everyone say amen and amen. After you're given, I want you to stand and worship with our praise team. In the very next voice you would hear after our song is our speaker of the night, Pastor Debbie Fleming will be coming. Praise the Lord. Can we just begin this service with our arms lifted up and just, just tell the Lord what a good, good father he is. Amen. You want God to show up and just start talking about him. He's going to come in. Amen. He just loves us so much. Oh 
if you can. Praise Amen. God. When I think about how good he is, I just sometimes just want to keep on singing and dancing. Amen. Praise the Lord. He's a good, good father because he knows just what is needed at the right time. He knows how to care for us. I want to tell you that everything that I'm about to say to you in the next few minutes, I'm going to base on one little scripture and it is Psalm 16 and 8. It says, I know the Lord is with me. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. Praise God. Aren't you glad that you don't have to worry? He's always right there. The 23rd Psalm doesn't say that the Lord is the shepherd. The 23rd Psalm says not the Lord is a shepherd. The 23rd Psalm says... The Lord is my shepherd. You know, when I was a little girl, I never asked for a shepherd, did you? I didn't. I asked for bicycles and baby dolls. I never asked for a shepherd, but I got one anyway. I'm so happy that I have a shepherd. I remember when I was growing up that I would frustrate my mother, and I would hear her say, I just don't know what I'm going to do with her. I'm so glad that God did, <laughs> aren't you? I'm really glad that he knew what to do with me. There was also a little girl who was memorizing the 23rd Psalm, and her teacher said, repeat after me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And her four-year-old little girl voice, she repeated, and she said, the Lord is my shepherd, and that's all I want. That's so true, isn't it? He's all we're ever going to need. We've got a shepherd. We didn't even ask for him, but we got him anyway, and I'm so happy that we do. When the psalmist is describing here as he's writing, now I have a lot of appreciation for songwriters and psalmists because I have had, in my past, have written music, and, and I'll tell you, just about anything that you write, you're going to have a reason for it. There is something inside of you that is wanting to come out, and it, it comes out by that pen and paper. But what he is describing here was a God who really, really cared for him. You see, he wasn't thinking in his mind that he served a God that was way off in some bubble up in space that just showed up every now and then. He knew that he had a God that really loved him, and he wanted to love him back. David had a key, I think, to being known as the man after God's own heart. And I believe that was the fact that he acknowledged who God was, that he was his shepherd and he was totally sold out for God. Can you just say with me right now, I know that God is with me. My favorite verse is this one, Psalms 139, 7 through 10, and it reads like this. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. He is everywhere. There was a Christmas song a long time ago. I loved it. And one of the lyrics was, at the end of it, it said, You better be good because Santa Claus is watching you. And then at the end of that, there was a little elf that said, He's everywhere! He's everywhere! Do y'all remember that? Y'all know? Can y'all say it? Let's do it together. He's everywhere! He's everywhere! Y'all need practice, I can tell you that. I'm glad that God is not a shot in the dark for me. 
I'm glad that I don't have to walk around here wondering, is he going to show up? Is he going to be here with me? He is not a hit and a miss. He's a home run every time. Say amen to that. He cares for you, and he watches over every detail of your life. He is always here, and he's always here, and he's always there, and he's always over there. He's over in East Hill Church right now. He's down here in another church in Cantonment. He's over in Afghanistan. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. John 14 and 17 reads, The Spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him or knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and he is in you. Matthew 28 and 20. And teaching them to obey everything. This is Jesus speaking. He says, I have commanded you. Now, I love this. He says, and surely. Now, when he said surely, I have to stop here. It reminds me so much. We have a next-door neighbor. He's been our neighbor for over 30 years. And the day we moved into our house, I knew he had made the right choice because he was cutting his grass, and he was praying in the Spirit. And you could hear him over his lawnmower. But he was just having him a good time in the Lord. And every now and then, he will come to our house. Right now, he's much older in age, and he shuffles over there. And he will sit on our porch and he will preach to us. And as he's preaching, if there's something he wants us to really know, he'll scoot way up on his chair and he'll say, Now, hear me out. Listen to me. Listen to me good. And that's says, imagine what Jesus might have been saying. Now, you need to know this. And when he says, surely, he's actually said, You can be sure of this. I am always with you to the very end of the age. You know, I know that there's been times I've ministered in places in different churches, and i got to tell you, I've always sensed in my spirit that there's somebody that needs to hear what I'm saying. I, it might just be one person, but I believe tonight there's more than one person that really needs to hear and to be encouraged by the fact that you are not alone. So if you'll say it with me again, say, God is with me. I know that he is. Hallelujah. He ain't going anywhere either. So you just rest assured he's there. Moses asked of God, he said, show me your glory. He wanted to see the presence of God in his essence. But God couldn't let that happen because no man could look upon God and live. So God hid Moses in the cleft of the rock. And as he passed by, he allowed Moses to see his hind side. I wonder if that's why we tend to recognize God's presence in our life after the fact. When God is with me in such a profound way, I usually don't recognize him until he has passed by. But he allowed Moses to see him, and I believe that we can still see him today. Amen? Even after he passes by. I think I'm going to call that hindsight. Now, I'm going to do something that I, I've never done this before. I just love doing that to y'all. I've never done it before. But I know that you're going to just be fine with it. I just got a feeling. But before I do, I want to just let you know, I'm going to share a personal account with you of how that I have experienced at some point in my life that God is with me, and I know that he is. So... As I'm sharing this with you, I, I took the liberty to write it down, so I'm going to read it, because you know, I didn't want to stand up here and go, and, uh, uh, you know, you know what I mean? Uh, I didn't want that, so I, and I didn't want to say things that would not be relevant to what we're talking about. So what I'd like for you to do as I read this, I would appreciate it if you would just see if you can recognize God in this account. Are you ready? Okay. Now, I need you to buckle up and stay in your seat until the bus has come to a full stop. I say that to you because in 2015, I went to New York City for an extended visit with my new grandbaby. After much prayer and supplication, the mode of transportation that I chose was the Greyhound bus. Some people call, call it the Grey Dog. A one-way trip by bus to New York City is 36 hours. My departure time was 1 o'clock in the morning. As I stepped aboard what I was certain my research had prepared me for, I was overcome with every emotion known to man. 
I was experiencing fear, anxiety, sadness. Leaving behind those that I loved made it difficult. However, I loved those that I was going to see. But the only happy thought that I had was there would be gold at the end of the rainbow with my new grandbaby. I sat clutching my carry-on with tears rolling down my cheeks. I didn't feel brave at all. In fact, I was frightened and I felt foolish to be intimidated by such a small feat. As we rolled out of the station, it took all I could do not to stand up and yell, please stop this bus and let me off. We hadn't gone very far when the chubby young woman in the seat ahead of me turned around. And with the sweetest countenance on her little round face, she smiled at me and she asked, Where are you headed? Is this your first time on the dog? She looked very familiar to me, although we had never met. She continued asking her questions, and as I answered them, I realized we were laughing together like old friends. She encouraged me and said the trip would be a long one, but it wouldn't be so bad. As long as I didn't use the restroom on the bus, eat the food in the stations, and walk the aisles as often as possible to avoid leg cramps. Soon, my sadness had turned into gladness. My morning had turned into joy. I was disappointed when our very first stop would be my new friend's last stop. Yet, I had been comforted. I know that God is with me. Somebody give God a hand clap of praise right now. <laughs> He deserves that. He's so good to us. The following long hours were uneventful, stopping here and stopping there. People would come and they would go. Soon we would be in Savannah, Georgia. This is where I would leave my comfort zone and change buses. It was late that night, and I had never changed buses before, so I was praying that I would have enough sense to get on the right one. I could just see myself down in Miami, Florida. The station was filled with people, <clears throat> but as fast as they came in, they left. Wandering aimlessly, I must have had a very perplexed look on my face, reading the signs above my head. When the most uncomely man who reads of alcohol and a month of Sundays without a bath approached me and asked, Do you know what you're doing? I said, No. He said, Give me your ticket. I did. <laughs> then he said, follow me and I did what a perfect opportunity for this man to have a vacation in New York City and me to be found dead in the alley behind the station but he took me to my bus which was his also and the only seats left were two that were side by side what do you know his and hers Back on the interstate, I noticed he was behaving in a very strange fashion. He would lean way down, and then he would sit up. Then he would lean down again and sit up. Lean down, and I think, what is he doing? Soon an odor filled the area where we were sitting. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to know he was smoking weed or crack cocaine. I guess he thought no one would notice. The driver of the bus did, however, and he threatened to throw both of us off the bus if we didn't stop what we were doing. <laughs> he must have thought we were together. All I could think of was great. Grandma's going to be high as a kite when she meets her new grandbaby. <laughs> I need to let you know right now that God will use the people that he needs in whatever environment that you are in. In the Bible, at some point, God used a donkey. I think he may have done it again that day. <laughs> Shortly after the driver's threat to throw me off the bus, I don't know if I fell asleep or passed out from the fumes of my friend's bad habit, but I was very glad that he said goodbye as we passed through the Carolinas. I was awakened as the morning sun brought a new day and a fresh sense of adventure. I had come too far to turn back now. You're probably wondering, are we there yet? We were on what dog riders call the last leg, and my journey would soon come to an end. We would be pulling into the station in Times Square during rush hour. 
a new concern had arisen. What if Jody, my son, could not find me? What if I can't find Jody? What if I get lost in this concrete jungle? A thousand fearful thoughts bombarded my mind. Continually praying without ceasing, trying my best to trust the God I could not see. The, dr the gray dog made its way through Virginia. Now I have a nose like Toucan Sam. This time it was not an odor of alcohol or drugs. It was chicken and rice. It smelled like home. I followed my nose only to find to my right, three rows back, a woman with a very big hat. It was red and a bright red suit and she was sporting red stilettos. She looked like a church lady to me. Our eyes met. I was being nice and I said, that smells delicious. She said, thank you. My daddy made this for me before I left home. I said, well, you must have a good daddy. She laid her fork down on her plate. She looked me straight in the eye and she said, I have a very good daddy. I thought that was odd, but we engaged in small talk for just a few moments. Then I turned back so that she could enjoy her meal. We arrived in Times Square as scheduled. The station there is underground, so it's dark like a dungeon. I made my way off the gray dog for the last time without a clue of where I was and where I was going. But I could see the lady in red approaching an elevator to my right. I chose the escalator in front of me that I assumed would take me up to the street where I would meet daylight once again. Suddenly, I heard a voice behind me yelling, Wait! Stop! Hey! Wait! Stop! Wait up! Well, I turned around. I'm like, you talking to me? It was the lady in red, clamoring in her red stilettos, dragging her red luggage up the escalator. She was talking to me. At the top of the escalator, <clears throat> she grabbed my hand, and out of breath, she said, do you have someone you can call? I said, yes, my son. She said, call him right now and tell him you will be at the intersection on 42nd Street. Do it right now. Don't wait. Do it. And I'm like, okay. So I did. Traffic was very heavy. Jody was on a, only about 10 minutes away from where we were. He had gotten behind in traffic. But then she led me to the intersection on 42nd. And with her, her red painted fingernail, she pointed at me and she said, Stay here. Don't you move until your son gets here. And then she grabbed me by the other hand and she said, And don't you speak to anyone. They're going to try to talk to you, but don't you talk to anyone. Then she did a really strange thing. She pulled me close to her and she hugged me. It was long and it was very close as if we had been friends forever, saying goodbye. I thought for a moment that she was going to cry. The noise on the street distracted me for a second as she pulled away. When I looked back, all I could see, as far as I could see, was a red stiletto sliding into a silver car as it drove away. Now you may ask, do you think she was an angel? No, I do not. I believe she was a woman that had ears to hear, ear, ears to hear what the Spirit had to say to her. In my imagination, I could just see this scenario of this woman at the elevator. I'm going this way. She's going that way. And I think this is what happened. She had a plan <clears throat> to meet her people on the right side of the building. But God had a different plan. I think the Holy Spirit whispered to her, go help her. And she probably dismissed it and thought, she'll be okay. Then the spirit in the next second or two probably whispered to her again and said, go help her. By this time, the lady in red, she's beginning to feel that her ride is impatiently waiting for her. And as so many of us do, she still dismissed that still small voice. Our good, good father was persistent as he always is. And at this point, he probably spoke just like a father. 
That is your sister. Don't you leave her in this concrete jungle by herself. You go help her. When I get to heaven, I'm going to look her up and say, thank you for being obedient to our heavenly father. Amen. As I connected with Jody, I couldn't wait to testify of the goodness of God and the manifest presence that God had shown me in my life on that day. In the span of 36 hours, I had been comforted, I had been led, and I had been loved. Do you see God in this account that I am reading to you? Sometimes when I pray, I pray like Moses. I say, God, show me your glory. I want to see you. I even sing a song sometimes around the house that says, show us your glory. We just want to see you, Lord. And I think I'm doing this hoping that when I do seal God's glory, that I'm going to be a better person, that I'm going to be able to handle my affairs better, that I maybe not be so uh, impatient in some areas. Maybe I won't be so grouchy. Maybe my faith is going to be increased, and I won't be as doubtful. But selfishly, I want to see God for my very own benefit. But the benefit goes to the ones who see the evidence of God's presence in my life. The presence of God rubbed off on Moses that day on the cleft of the rock, but the other people saw it before Moses did. Show me your glory, your presence, so that others will see your glory in me. Praise the Lord. In closing, Psalms 121, 7 through 8, it reads like this. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Can somebody say, I know that God is with me. Now, like I said, I don't know if there's anybody here that really needed this encouragement. And I, I'm going to tell you, Pastor asked me to do this to... to speak with you over about a month ago I started preparing and I've been working and getting searching out the scriptures and I could not get away from this I worked so hard I had four pages till last night and my computer literally dumped it all I have no clue where it's at so again today I had to go back God is this what you want and I literally have to ask him that because God is with us Sometimes when I'm riding my car, I have a tendency, I talk to God, and I know you do too. And I'll just be talking, and I, sometimes I find myself talking like this. Well, he's not there, honey. He's right here in the passenger seat. And I'll catch myself, and I'll say, now you understand what I'm saying? Or I'll just start talking, you know, because I have a personal and up-close relationship with my Heavenly Father. Because he is not out there. He is right here. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. Someone once said, as Pastor William has come, and says, when life gets hard, you do not need reasons. You need comfort. You do not need answers. You need someone. And God does not come to us with an explanation. He comes to us with his presence. Can we just praise God right now? For his presence in our life. In Jesus' name, thank you, God, for your help tonight. Amen. Let us stand together. The word of the Lord has come to us tonight. And I can't help but just ask you to say it with me one more time. I know God is with me. I know God is with me. Let's just say it a couple more times. Feels good to say it, doesn't it? I know, I know God, God is, is with, with me. me. need is so large, I know I can't handle it by myself. The need's bigger than I am. It's bigger than my own support system, but I know that the need in my life, the thing that I'm needing, it's not too big for my God. 
Friend, if that describes you tonight, I want to invite you to an altar of prayer with us. Maybe you'd say, Pastor, I don't want to tell everybody about my need. I understand. That's fine. If you need that type of privacy, these altars are open and you can deal by yourself. But if you want somebody to agree with you in prayer, these pastors are coming. They'll be up here with me. and We'd love to pray with you. And we'll believe for the miraculous power of God because we know his presence will go with us. He will keep us and he will guide us every step of our lives. Let's look to the Lord in prayer as we sing.
think so many years ago that when I would see the glory of the Lord or when his presence would be so, you know, so full in my life, I used to think, well, you know, I can't wait till the next time. I don't have to wait till the next time. I don't have to jump through hoops before I can be in his presence. I don't have to sing a slow song. I don't have to sing a fast song. I don't, there's nothing that I have to do in order to find myself where he is. And you know, I would like to say this next song that we're going to sing is it's just basically a prayer. And if you can kind of just catch it as we sing along, show me your ways so that I may walk with you. And that way, see, as we begin to walk with the Lord, we go beyond just hanging out in the presence. It becomes a continual dance with Him. I don't know if any of y'all have ever been dancers in your life, but there's nothing better than a two-step. Nothing better. And if you've ever just seen yourself with Jesus and thinking that as I'm in His presence, it's nothing that has to stop and start. It's just a continual dance, and it never, ever has to end. Amen. trip to New York City but I still had 36 hours I had to come back home I do want you to know that I did say to myself I would never take a Greyhound bus again but I have taken actually one more down to South Florida to see my grandbaby we'll do anything for them won't we on my ride back from New York City I was not frightened I was just anxious to get home but there was a lady that sat next to me I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me all throughout the trip by her lunch. 
just tell her something good. Encourage her today. You know, there is nothing more than to walk side by side with our good, good Father and know that He talks to you. And He's done, given us the most miracle that He actually has been able. We can hear Him. He has allowed us to hear Him speak. I just want to encourage you today that as you go about your day tomorrow, pay attention and begin to recognize the glory of God as He is shining in your life. Amen. Enjoy the word tonight. <laughs> Truly enjoyed the word tonight, and the Lord is with me. The Lord is with you. Amen. And the Bible says, goodness and mercy follows you. There was a period in my life I would get in my car, and, and when, I, when I got in my car, I would clean out my passenger seat because I believed that was God's seat. That was the Lord's seat. And I would glance over my shoulder because I believe goodness and mercy was in the back seat with me. But when I did th that, that caused me to walk different. That caused me to talk different. I walk, when I walk, I had my shoulders up high and squared away. And I walk with a sense of confidence, knowing that God was opening doors that I should go through and closing doors that I wouldn't go through. And he was giving me direction. And as I was behind the, as I was behind the wall, I believe the Lord told me to let you know to be careful to entertain strangers. For some has entertained angels, angels unaware. And I want to encourage you. When you see someone in need, see someone on the bus, on a, uh, sitting out on a bus uh, uh, the bench and look like they're in distress, turn the car around. You're not in that big of a hurry. Go back and see what you can do and be a blessing to them. And uh, I believe we're going to entertain some angels. Amen. And I have helped many people. And a few of those people, when I helped them out, I glanced back and they was totally disappeared. And the second time, and I know when God said that was an angel, you entertain unaware. And sometimes I often think, I wonder what if, if I wouldn't have been Christ-like. And if I wouldn't have been showed the love of Christ toward them, what would the Lord think about me? Amen. And so all of us has different types of prejudice. Let's throw that aside. And when we see someone in need and we can share the love of Christ, let's do it. Let's share the love of Christ. And we are blessed to be a blessing. Amen. Let us pray. Father, Lord, we truly thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for speaking to our hearts. We thank you that you're always with us. We never in distress. You're only a, a call away. We just thank you that we can call on you in the midnight hour and you'll be there. That you can call on you for direction and you give direction. You said in all our ways acknowledge you and you shall direct our path. Or teach us to live that you're with us. Live like you're right beside us. Live like you in the car with us. Let us treat people that like we want to be treated. Talk to people like we want to be talked to. Show mercy like we want to receive mercy. Give on forgiveness like we want to receive forgiveness from you. Lord, everything we want from you, Lord, enable us to give it to others. And Lord, we pray that as we leave this place tonight, let us walk in your presence. Direct our actions, our thoughts, our words, and let your love absorb from us. Let us be a conduit to your presence. And that when we go and we embrace someone in your name, that you'll be there present to comfort them. Let us be your hands and feet here on earth to accomplish your purpose that you may get the praise and get all the honor. Lord, we thank you. We're grateful. We're grateful that we could be used by you, that we'd be fit for the master's use. And Lord, we thank you for being with us. 
We thank you for being your long suffering and your tender mercy. And Lord, we pray that as we leave this place, that we'll not leave your presence. And you would direct us and protect us. And Lord, we ask you to assign an angel for each and every home. Strong angel, a ministering angel. And Lord, I plead the blood over every home, every family represented here tonight. And we thank you and we love you. Let everyone say amen and go in peace. Amen.